Earth, the pale blue dot. Once, the planet was teeming with life, boasting a tremendous variety of ecological systems and species. But now, the cradle of humanity finds itself withdrawn, isolated to the last safe city, besieged on all sides by our enemies and desolate environments. The collapse, the great cataclysmic event, marked the end of the Golden Age, completely transformed our world, just as the Traveler itself transformed many worlds before. But what happened exactly? How great was the extent of the damage? And is there any chance of recovering our world? Welcome back my friends to another Embrace Destiny video, Kaz PhD here, continuing our series on the life of Destiny. While we have a lot to talk about concerning the future of Destiny, today's video is going to be about the present and the past. Today we will be talking about Earth's ecology, the environment, and how our world has changed to what we see today. While starting quite dark, I assure you that things will get better, and for those pressed for time, feel free to jump to the timestamp in the description below for the short notes. It is said that the only constant in this universe is change. This certainly applies to Earth's environment. To understand its transition, let's go back in time to the pre-Golden Age. Records indicate that Earth's health was quite juxtaposed. On the one hand, fossil records and accounts speak of a world with vast biodiversity, from deserts to rainforests, marshes, seas, to central plains, life on Earth thrived everywhere. On the other hand, human-led climate change was dramatically challenging Earth's health through various acts of deforestation, pollution, overconsumption, and so on. The cryptarchs are in agreement here, all but the very few fringe and poorly reviewed. Humanity, by and large, was acting in an unsustainable manner, leading to global warming, a weakening of the ozone, and species extinction. Then the Traveler came, a time of miracles, where humanity's lifespan tripled. Yet it is unclear the effect the Traveler had on Earth's ecology. Certainly little effect has been catalogued, Nothing of the terraforming witnessed on Mars, Io, or even Titan. Indirectly, it is difficult to say. Most of our archives, the lore on the Golden Age, speaks of that time's technological marvels and the global collaboration between cultures. Little is depicted through an environmental lens. Perhaps with knowledge came wisdom, with collaboration came consideration and humanity began to enact practices which were better suited to Earth's environmental sustainability. Perhaps it was a less conscious affair, and just an indirect result of humanity's needs being better met, thanks to this age of miracles. In any case, change, remember, is constant. The collapse was more than simply the fall of humanity and the end of the Golden Age. Severe environmental changes wreaked havoc on our world, leading to a severe change in ecology, region to region, as well as the likely extinction of many species of animal and plant life. As a former speaker recounts in the severing entry of the Constellation's lore book, the fall isn't quick. It happens over weeks and months. Cataclysmic disasters, natural and unnatural, flattening human settlements on every planet that I have made. I have shaped my work laid flat. Earthquakes, tidal waves, solar flares, cyclones, sinkholes, exploding lakes, wildfires, unknown, untreatable plagues raise populations in hours. Water goes black with unknown poisons forced down my throat. The ground opens up and swallows entire cities and I am sick, sick, sick. This has happened before. I'd watched in my dreams the cities that fell, alien cities torn down by a wind so fierce that it flattened an entire world, and it is not my fault. Numerous details to study here. First, these words come at the time of the collapse, from one of the first speakers as well as the traveler. Notice the double lines in the text, the whisper speak, as I call it where the Traveler is speaking with, through, around the speaker. These words detail the exact environmental impact of this great disaster, and it is not difficult to imagine the effect these would have on our precious world. Each would devastate ecosystems, disrupt habitats, change weather and climate conditions, 
and lead to the countless deaths of human, animal, and plant life populations alike. It is important to remember that the environment is both resilient and fragile at the same time. The slightest change in temperature or precipitation can result in a soil which is less yielding to plant life, or a modified navigational pattern of animals. So try to imagine the devastation which would occur with such violent changes as described before. The effect on humanity was pronounced. Human populations were decimated, people huddled in villages congregating when they could. We went from numerous cities down to just one. Life was tough and scarce. Of course, leave it to humanity to con contribute further to our own demise. If you read through Oren's story in the lore book Ectasis, you learn that warlords further contaminated the land in devastating and irresponsible ways in the Dark Age. It reads, They reach the settlement. It is smoldering cinder and ruin. Gol frets about fission products and acute radiation, so Oren lingers at a distance and studies what remains. A cat moves among the most distant rubble, hunting for mice. A tattered banner stirs in the breeze. She sees nothing more, so she ignores Gol's warning and goes in for a closer look. She finds bodies, adults mostly, some children. There are little houses for big animals, but there are no big animals among the dead. How did this happen? She asks, overcome by grief for these charred strangers. A aliens? I doubt it. The Fallen don't often use nuclear weapons. It ruins the land. My guess is that a warlord raided this place for its livestock and then set off a bomb. Furthermore, we have evidence of other contaminated areas, such as the writings etched into the Thorium Holt armor set. Here, we learn about the Manhattan Nuclear Zone and the efforts of Warlock Mandawasi. Known as the hero of the Len Lenape Valley Extraction, which is just outside of Old New Jersey, Mandawase led the evacuation of the area, relocating collapsed survivors up to the last city. The armor itself was modified from radiation suits, used to explore Earth's nuclear zones, and any more recent requests to explore the Manhattan Zone must go through Mandawase. So, what the collapse started, humanity added to. What little was left, was then ransacked by our enemies, Fallen, and in more recent times, Cabal. These have scoured our world, taking whatever resources they could find, and basically occupying and destroying the rest. We know what that has done to us. Ever since the collapse, humanity has been on a pilgrimage to the last city, guided by many teams of heroes, including the Takanomi Rangers, the Pilgrim Guard, the Iron Lords, and more recently, Hawthorne and her people. But here, inside our walls, it might be easy to miss what's going on outside. In the city, it might be hard to imagine life other than the occasional pigeon or rat. Most of the stories that make it back are legendary tales of monsters and battles. Even when simply exploring, guardians are usually too, moving too quickly and focused more on enemy movement than animal tracks. It might offer some mixed solace to know that the land is recovering, albeit changed, dangerous, and slowly. Looking back at the Constellation lore book, we hear from the first speaker to see a ghost. At the request of one of those shy little lights, the speaker travels out into the valley, searching for the ghost's chosen, their guardian. The entry waking reads, We travel for several hours. The land here is recovering, not just from the collapse, but from the time before it. Resources for our settlement are scarce, but nature is creeping back in, and nature is cruel now. It's been starving and confused for decades, jostled out of its natural order, and now we reap the consequences. Wolves steal our livestock, mange-ridden bears wander through our compound late at night, pawing at our doors. The land is so thick with the memory of poison that it won't grow crops. Not a promising sign, but not surprising. As the speaker put it, the world was poisoned, and it was going to take time for its life to recover. 
But life will not be contained. Life breaks free. It expands to new territories. It crashes through barriers painfully, even dangerously. In short, life uh, finds a way. Look around you. Life continues whether you think about it or not. Life is resilient. In the tower, whether you're decrypting engrams with Master Rahul or selling wares down the bazaar, look up. You'll see pigeons. You'll see many more if you make your way down to the hangar. Chickens, cats, Hawthorne's Falcon, Lewis. If you've recently relocated from the farm, you may have seen many of the same, as well as a horse. Insects are quite common, especially in the summer months, and you may find them buzzing around while you play a game with friends. For you guardians out there, take a moment. Yes, we have bigger matters to attend to, threats to stop and treasures to find, but slow down. Just a second. No matter where you go in the system, there is life. Not just the monstrous kind that we tirelessly and seemingly endlessly endure and push back, but animal life, plant life, insect life. Thanks to the work of one guardian, Magic Mr. Lemon, I was able to assemble a first draft of a listing of all animal life seen and referenced in our world. Now I have taken that list and added further categorization and analysis, from lore card, item inscription, to actual visual reporting, we have it all. That list is included in this video's description, and if you would like to use the content, by all means. If you note an issue, find more that isn't referenced, or would like to suggest something, the document should be open for comments. My plan is to use this in further videos, to further explore the life in our worlds in order to both celebrate it, but also to understand it, understand the effect the greater forces have on our home. Only time will tell what the recent arrival of the pyramids will do to our worlds. We do not know exactly why they are here, nor what they want. All we know for certain is the last time paracausal forces met here, we faced the collapse. Extreme gravimetric forces, environmental changes, and it disrupted life on a global scale. Ecosystems changed completely, some flipping from marsh or forest to becoming poisonous, desolate wastelands. Earthquakes and tidal waves swallowed and fractured the land. On top of this, warlords in the Dark Age launched fission-based weapons, unafraid of the carnage they could cause, and plagues swept the land. But hope is not lost. Life continues, hidden in the rafters of the farm, high up in the tower, in the wilds of the European dead zone, and even as far as Nessus, animal life continues to flourish. For an excellent review of this, I recommend Kimber Prime's documentary on the creatures in Destiny. It is an excellent piece with lovely narration, commentary, and music accompanying some great footage of the life we can see in the wild. I have some thoughts I wish to add to this, further on which to expand and explore, but that will have to wait until next time. I hope you have enjoyed this video. I know that it covered a lot of ground and not all of it pleasant. I want to keep exploring the life of Destiny, but thought it necessary to remind ourselves why the animal life exists as it currently does. Different, markedly more isolated and stranger than we have seen in the past. With the destruction of the Almighty behind us and the pyramids ahead, I hope you are all happy and safe with your families and able to reach out to support your greater community. Guardians, be safe out there. We are delving deeper into larger mysteries than ever before, and if you need a moment to just breathe, look down your sights, not at your enemy, but some of the life your efforts protect. Thank you very much for watching. Feel free to go back into our video archive to learn more about the limits of guardians, such as do they need to eat? Can they get drunk? As always, be safe. Be kind. I will see you all next time. Bye now.